Let's start with some national news first, where Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday has urged the ASEAN member countries to intensify cooperation in combating militancy in the region. The Prime Minister Modi, who is addressing the 15th ASEAN summit in Manila, has said that all countries have been individually dealing with the issue of militancy, extremism and terrorism since long, and it was time for them to come together to collectively address this issue. The Indian Prime Minister has also stressed on India's Act East policy, saying that it was framed keeping in mind the regional security architecture of the Indo-Pacific region. India will have to convince a British court that fugitive liquor baron Vijay Malia will not face any threat to his life in jail if extradited back to India. A meeting chaired by Union Home Secretary Rajiv Gobba, attended by representatives of various authorities, deliberated on the response that has to be filed in the UK court, rejecting Malia's apprehensions that he will not be safe inside of an Indian jail if he were to be brought back to India. Three properties belonging to the fugitive mafia boss Daud Ibrahim were auctioned on Tuesday. This in a second such sale of the seized properties of India's most wanted man that have been put on sale by the Finance Ministry under the Smugglers and Foreign Exchange Manipulators Act. The three properties, including a hotel, a guest house and also, a five, also five rooms in a building, were reportedly auctioned for... $1.7 million. The Safi Burhani Upliftment Trust won the auction with the highest bids for all three properties. Indian police have been unable to trace Daud Ibrahim for several decades since he fled India in the 1980s and have struggled to get a grip on his property. The second edition of the joint military exercise between Indian and the Kazakh armies concluded in northern Himachal Pradesh. On Tuesday, the 12-day-long exercise was conducted in the Bakhlo cantonment with the aim to enhance military ties between the two nations. The first edition of the military exercise was held in Kazakhstan, India's largest trading partner in the mineral-rich region in 2016. Residents of India's Ludhiana city have complained of respiratory problems as thick smog continues to shroud the city on Tuesday. The much of India's north, including the national capital New Delhi, has been reeling under the thick blanket of life-threatening smog that has besieged the region for several weeks now. The smog has also reduced visibility in the region, giving a harrowing time to commuters. The 37th International Trade Fair themed on the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Startup India, Stand Up India initiative kick-started in New Delhi on Tuesday. As many as 3,000 exhibitors and participants from almost 22 countries have put up their pavilions at the annual fair which is organised by the India Trade Promotion Organisation. The first four days of the 14-day event will be open only for business visitors, after which it will be thrown open for the general public as well. The United Nations Children's Fund, along with India's National Stock Exchange on Tuesday, has celebrated Children's Day in Mumbai. The event, which is called Kids Take Over NSE, was organized as part of UNICEF's initiative to celebrate the Children's Day by making them essay high visibility roles in various fields to highlight the challenges that are faced by them. Now, the children participated in a colorful cultural program and also rang the exchange's opening bell. A major victory for the LGBT community in Australia. The Australians have voted in favour of the same-sex marriages in the country. As many as 62% of the 12.7 million people who participated in the two-month postal survey voted in favour of allowing gay marriages. U.S. Senators have discussed during a meeting on Tuesday whether President Donald Trump has the sole authority to order nuclear strikes against North Korea. The meeting that is titled Authority to Order the Use of Nuclear Weapons comes amidst provocative statements and Twitter comments from Trump regarding North Korea. The U.S. President must seek congressional approval for conventional military action, but he does not need Congress's approval to use nuclear weapons. 
Five people, including the suspected shooter, have died in a shooting spree on Tuesday at a crossroads near a school in a remote area of rural California. Now, reports indicate that some children were in fact amongst those who were wounded in this shooting rampage. Law enforcement officers have shot the gunman dead, who was among the five people who have been killed in a series of shootings at seven or more different locations. The authorities so far have not given out the identity of the shooter in this case. The U.S. House of Representatives will be adopting a mandatory training to guard against sexual harassment and discrimination. Now, Speaker Paul Ryan said on Tuesday after hearing in which women shared their stories of sexual harassment at the Capitol. The lawmakers have called for mandatory sexual harassment training for all members and employees who are working for the Senate's House of Representatives. The U.S. regulators have approved the first digital pill with an embedded sensor to track if the patients are taking their medication properly. This marking a significant step forward in the convergence of healthcare and technology. The medicine is a version of Abilify drug for the schizophrenics and also bipolar disorder and depression and it contains a tracking device that is developed by the Proteus Digital Health Systems. That the system offers doctors an objective way to measure if the patients are indeed swallowing their pills on schedule, opening up a new avenue for monitoring medicine compliance that can in fact be applied to other therapeutic areas as well. Uruguayan president met on Tuesday with his Mexican counterpart in Mexico City as the two leaders discussed bilateral issues in an effort to consolidate trade ties. The Vasquez highlighted Uruguay's enormous debts of gratitude towards Mexico for opening its arms to thousands of Uruguayans during the last civil military dictatorship. Meanwhile, the Mexican president, Pena Nieto, has thanked Vasquez for Uruguay's aid and support following September's deadly earthquake. The European Council Chief Donald Tusk has expressed the European Union's commitment to help combat violent extremism in Southeast Asia during a regional meeting with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations on Tuesday. The recent attacks by the pro-Islamic state fighters in the southern Philippines have raised concerns on issues of security in Southeast Asia, prompting the Philippines, Malaysia and Indonesia to set up border pitch patrols on its waters to combat cross-border insurgencies. The Chinese Premier Li Keqiang on Tuesday has pledged to work with Australia to jointly promote fairer and better trade for economic globalization. The Li Keqiang said that China is in fact willing to work with Australia to further unleash the dividends of the free trade agreements and further expand the scope of opening up in trade and investments and also jointly promote fairer and better trade for the development of the economic globalization. The Philippines on Tuesday has officially handed over its rotating chairmanship of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to Singapore, bringing its regional meeting of the 21 world leaders to a close. The two-day summit saw the leaders of the 10-member bloc meet with their dialogue partners from the US, China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia, New Zealand and Canada. And they also discussed a range of issues from trade to security cooperation. The French President Emmanuel Macron has promised a national effort to revitalize France's deprived urban areas at a speech on Tuesday. Eager to shake off criticism by his opponents who have labelled him as President of the Rich, Macron has spent two days visiting towns outside the French capital which was rattled by unrest earlier in the year following accusations of the police violence against a local man. The Macron has focused on employment and also on improving public services, saying that the state had abandoned certain deprived areas in recent years. Tensions are simmering in the town of Clichy, a suburb of Paris where the Muslim community have resorted to praying in the streets, claiming that there was no space for worship in the city. 
Now, as many as 100 French officials demonstrated last Friday saying that the street prayers were against French law of separation of church and the state. But the local Muslims have been protesting against the closure of their place of worship in the town centre, accusing the mayor of ignoring the request to find a suitable venue for their Friday prayers. France marked the second anniversary of the Paris attacks on Monday with somber ceremonies and painful memories for the relatives of the 130 people who were killed. Ceremonies were held at sites such as cafes and restaurants where terrorists unleashed a bloodbath violence two years ago. Two years ago, nine attackers killed a total of 130 people and injured as many as hundreds of others. The Islamic State group had claimed responsibility for the attacks. The police in Tampa in Florida have been investigating whether a fatal shooting incident on Tuesday could be linked to a possible serial killer who is feared to have murdered three victims in a string of night attacks terrorizing a city neighborhood. The police have said that they think that a single killer is responsible for these three attacks because they happened so close to each other at pretty much the same time in the evening and without any obvious motive. The British Parliament started hours of debate on Tuesday by arguing over when the two-year negotiation period for Brexit should in fact end and whether there should be a fixed time at all to put an end to the negotiations. But this was just the first day of what promises to be a very lengthy set of debates in the British Parliament on Prime Minister Theresa May's blueprint for leaving the European Union. The debates that will challenge her diminished authority within the Parliament and could potentially force changes to her Brexit plan. Scotland's First Minister has said the talks with the British Prime Minister Theresa May on Tuesday were cordial and constructive. The Nicola Sturgeon has said that she and May had not reached an agreement regarding the UK government's Brexit bill. The face-to-face -face meeting came as the Parliament debated by arguing over when the two-year negotiation period for Brexit should in fact come to an end and whether there should be a fixed time at all on this issue. The Lebanese Foreign Minister has said that Saad al-Hariri's freedom would only be proven once he returns from Saudi Arabia and that any Saudi sanctions will destabilize the entire region. The Saad al-Hariri had announced his shocked resignation as Lebanon's Prime Minister in a broadcast from Riyadh 10 days ago. His abrupt resignation had sent Lebanon spinning into a political crisis and back onto the front line of the Middle East power struggle between the Sunni Muslim Saudi Arabia and the Shiite-dominated Iran. The director of Libya's central bank has warned on Tuesday that economic conditions in the country had become extremely dire, with losses reaching as much as $160 billion. The central bank director has called on all Libyan parties to bear the responsibility and also to unite to overcome the crisis. Libya has two rival governments in the east and in the west of the country and an array of armed groups who are vying for control of the city. Negotiations began in Marrakesh on Tuesday over fishing quotas for a number of species of fish in the Atlantic, including the bluefin tuna. The Moroccan city is hosting the 25th meeting of the International Commission for the Conservation of the Atlantic Tuners. The negotiations will of course take place over the next few weeks with the conference due to finish on the 22nd of December. An Oslo court has told on Tuesday that Norway's plans for the Arctic oil exploration are unconstitutional and should be stopped with immediate effect. The Greenpeace and the Nature and Youth groups have argued that the 2015 oil licensing round in the Arctic violates the Norwegian constitution because Oslo has agreed to the Paris Accord's goals to end the fossil fuel era in this century. Greece has declared a state of emergency on the island of Saimi on Tuesday. This after a sudden downpour swept cars into the sea, damaged homes and shops and also cut off electricity and water supplies. 
Volunteers and equipment from the army and the regional government were deployed to the eastern Aegean island to restore roads and also to repair damage that was caused by the storm which began on Monday. The firefighters had also arrived on the island with water pumps to remove flood water. The Saudi-led military coalition has hit Sana'a's international airport in an airstrike, damaging parts of the runway and destroying the ground navigation tower. The coalition fighting Yemen's Houthi movement had said last week that it had closed all air, land and sea routes into Yemen to stem what it said was a flow of arms to the Houthis from Iran. Now, the coalition has been at war with the Iran-allied Houthis for the past two and a half years in a conflict that has seen over 10,000 people be killed and millions be displaced. Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi has said that he will take action soon over the border areas under the Kurdish control, but has said that his government's forces will regain them without any violence. The Iraq's Kurds had voted overwhelmingly for independence in a referendum in September, defying the central government in Baghdad, which had ruled the ballot to be illegal. The armoured vehicles and a tank were seen near Harare on Tuesday, but the streets of the Zimbabwean capital remained calm. This, a day after the armed forces chief said that he was prepared to act to end a purge of supporters of Vice President who was sacked last week. Now, that unprecedented statement by General Constantine Chiwenga represented a sharp escalation of a rumbling political struggle over who will succeed President Robert Mugabe, who's been in power since the country gained independence from Britain way back in the year 1980. Venezuela's opposition said on Tuesday that this week's planned political dialogue in the Dominican Republic with President Nicolas Maduro's government was being postponed because regional guarantors were not going and negotiations to ease the bitter and long-running political crisis in the OPEC nation has been scheduled for Wednesday. The previous dialogue efforts have ended in recriminations between the two sides with no concrete progress being made. The long-awaited Museum of the Bible, boasting thousands of biblical texts and also artifacts, is set to open on Friday, just a few blocks from the U.S. capital. Now, from fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the cuneiform tablets to high-tech exhibits and also a biblical garden, the museum's creators hope that everyone will feel welcome once the museum opens. The last piece of a missing Magritte painting was found underneath another artist's works at the Magritte Museum in Brussels using X-ray imaging. The fourth part of the enchanted pose was painted over by Magritte to create his 1935-1936 to work, God is Not a Saint, which depicts two women leaning on columns. But the Royal Museum of the Fine Arts of Belgium collaborated with the European Centre of Archaeometry at the University of Liege to find the last piece of the puzzle using radiographic imaging. A famous diamond that is linked to the French royalty was sold for nearly 15 million US dollars at an auction in Geneva on Tuesday called the La Grande Mazarine, a 19 carat pink diamond belonging to the French crown for more than 200 years and was part of the crown jewels has been sold at the auction.